Welcome to the podcast again. That's uh, different from Hey Guys that I normally do. So. <laughs> uh, today we are fortunate enough to have TJ Harville. Um, he is, I'm, I'm going to probably say it wrong, but you're the executive chef, right? That's I've been correct, saying yeah. head chef a lot. So executive chef of the new Marriott City Center, correct? You got it. Okay. And um, so we're going to do a great deal of uh, talking to him about cooking. And I'll tell a couple funny stories of why it makes sense that TJ is <laughs> a chef now. And, uh, you know, just kind of dabble on some other stuff, maybe some, uh, some hunting and some wild game stuff. Um, you know later on in the podcast so we've been kind of uh opening everything up here lately with just a couple questions to to get people used to to hearing your voice and and to learn a little bit about your personality so um what kind of music are you listening to these days um you know i listen to a little bit of everything but i really like um you know i like classic country i don't really like the new stuff it's kind of the same thing i thought he was gonna uh, say Sergio simpson again everybody said Sergio simpson. Sergio simpson. Uh, yeah i mean i like him um you know, kind of like Americana music, you know, nothing too hard, nothing too soft. So kind of have you put away like the old Nelly and stuff? Is that, is that all gone from your life? <laughs> yeah, um, but I still do love some 90s R&B though. You know, I, I love me some 90s R&B, but other than that, no, I keep it pretty, pretty twangy and pretty country for the most part. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I still throw on some country grammar every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think everybody does. So if you... Um, I guess what what is your favorite uh, what's your favorite food? Uh, you know that's that's a really hard question. That yeah. is probably the one that I get the, the most. most. Yeah, because he just asked me what my favorite <laughs> podcast was earlier. And I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a difficult question. Um, it kind of depends on my mood. Um, what's your favorite comfort food? How about that? Is that good? Uh, that's a pretty good one. Okay, that's a pretty good one. Um, I make a lot of pasta at home. Gotcha. Um, I like to eat pasta. It's quick. It's easy. It you know checks off all the boxes when you're hungry, uh, and it's pretty it's pretty comfort food. So I like to make a lot of pasta at home. Cool, I eat that a lot. So uh, one of the the biggest questions that we've been asking people I don't know you probably don't know this but we had an Area 51 podcast right around the time that everybody <laughs> started the Area 51 thing, and it just so happened to hit and it ended up becoming really popular and got a lot of feedback and stuff like that, including people telling me about their alien stories and stuff like that so <laughs> got pretty interesting for a while but do you believe in aliens um i don't know I don't you weren't know. expecting that one were you? i was not <laughs> expecting that one i was not i was expecting a lot of food questions maybe some hunting questions but uh yeah aliens um i don't know that's a tough one um have you seen the ufo videos that they've like confirmed that are real now like through the fighter jets and stuff like that I have, but I still don't know if I buy it. Well, the Navy well, it, it came could still out. Be yeah. like, it could still be something human piloted, but yeah. they're definitely an un, unidentified flying object. I think. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's definitely tons of unidentified flying objects all over the place. It depends on how much you've had to drink on that particular night. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. For sure. For so, sure. Okay. Well, fair <laughs> enough. You don't know. I won't push any further than that. Um, if you could only make one type of food from here on out what would it be like one cuisine style let's, let's say one like <laughs> genre so like italian whatever it may be um i would probably go with asian cuisine oh that's an interesting answer yeah. i didn't expect that one it's uh it's really diverse uh the flavors are always really fun um they use a lot of vegetables which i love cooking with vegetables i love cooking vegetables um and that's that and and fish are are their two main yeah, they're pretty they're two main staples so and those are things that i really like to cook with and work with so i'd probably go with asian very cool very cool was not expecting that answer um what what if you could only eat one I would, I would stay with asian asian yeah oh, that's a solid answer yeah mine's changed over the years has yours kept the same or has it changed a little um bit? it's changed as i've learned more about different cuisines um you know when i first started cooking i thought asian cuisine was like great wall like you know in front of kroger like i thought that was it <laughs> like that that's what i thought like chinese food you mean was. it's not <laughs> <laughs> it took me it took me a really long time to realize like that's not what that is you know and i you know i was fortunate enough when i was in um, chicago um, i worked with so many people from so many different diverse backgrounds and they got to show me their cuisine and not only you know just working for chefs that had different cuisine backgrounds but working with other cooks um, you know, one of my cooks was, was from China and he made some of the most amazing Chinese food that I had no idea even existed. Wow. And took me to some places in Chinatown in Chicago that weren't 
your commercialized, Americanized Chinese food for, you know, people who are coming to visit Chinatown in Chicago. It's, you know, he takes you to the to the back room places where you order a fish or you order a crab and they go get it out of a fish tank and wow. <laughs> and, and do it right there. And it's, it's, it was really interesting. I have a friend that is um, half Japanese. He was born in Japan. His dad was in the military. And uh, he took his mom to, uh, what is the, the place, the local place in town with the drive through Sakura. Oh, yeah. Which I love, Sakura. I don't know if you've ever eaten it here. Uh, and I love it. And, and like, she wouldn't even eat it. So it's it's very interesting to to hear, like, the stories of, like, people that are that are from that region or, or that area. And, and they're used to that food. And, like, the, your difference, the difference that you have in your mind of the food versus what it actually is. So. Oh, it's, it's the, the difference is, I mean, it's night and day. It's night and day. So, um, I, I sent this to you via text, but obviously the people don't know the, the story. So, uh, I was telling Dave earlier, like we were in middle school, we had to come up with like a jingle or something like that. And TJ came up with this meat. It's what's for dinner uh, song. And I just, it was just so funny. Like to this day, do you remember what grade it was? It, was seventh, say, it had to be seventh or eighth. Cause I wasn't, wasn't there in sixth. Yeah. I, it was either seventh or I, I want to say seventh grade. I want to say it was in seventh grade. And I, I've been trying to remember it since you brought that up, and I can't remember it. It went meat. It's what's for dinner, meat. <laughs> you can perform it for us. You don't yeah. remember that? I remember it, but I don't remember like all the words. I don't the remember words. all the something words. a delectable, delicious something. Oh yeah. gosh, it was. But it was so good. I wish I could remember it too. But I just remember I the, I guess the more chorus uh, part yeah. of it. But I, I've been trying to remember it since then. Uh, since since you brought that and up. you changed your voice. You did a funny voice with it. <laughs> And I just remember it just being so hilarious, like just so funny. And like, I didn't think about anything of it at that time, obviously. And then, uh, you know, kind of, we, I would say we hung out a fair amount in middle school. Yeah. Yeah. We went to the conventions together. Mm -hmm. We didn't play sports together because I didn't play football, but all the conventions. And then, uh, I remember one time we were in middle school and I came over to your house with Brian Thierry <laughs> and you guys were playing, uh, I think it was Xbox. Um, and, I, and like you handed me a remote and I didn't know what to do with it. I'm like, what is this thing? I have a Nintendo 64. I was you know, like, I remember you guys being really good at video games. And so just, I just remember stuff like that. And then kind of as high school comes along, you kind of drift away and you, you don't see as many people as you used to that, um, but just, I, I was telling them in the vlog and I, I assume that you'll probably watch it, but it's one of the nicest, um, I guess, down to earth, uh, just kindest people I've ever been around. I've always thought very, very highly of you. So very happy to have you on here. Thank you very much. And I appreciate that. No, I'm, I'm excited to be here. I'm, I'm excited about it. Yeah. Well, um, I can't wait either. So obviously looking back, we had the meat song and I think there might've been one other one that was in French class, but I don't remember what it was. Uh, I do remember the one I remember doing the one in, in the French class because I had to do it in French and that was, and I was really, I was horrible at that class. I was not very good at French. But I do remember we had to make another one. Yeah, we did. And um, was it was probably essentially the same, right? <laughs> I mean, it probably was. I, that sounds like something I would do. Yeah. Just like copy it and translate yeah. it into French. Yeah. That sounds about right, too. <clears throat> but I remember, I think it was like for that thing that we did where we had all the different... Um, Houses they called them, but it was oh, like a that's home room. right. I yeah. think that's what that it was. was uh, they were they were Harry Potter themed, yeah. right? I was in the Jabberwockies. I think we were in the. Were we in the same one? I don't remember which one. Thyri was, was in there with me. I don't remember which one I was in. And which was good for me because we had a lot of like um, physical things that we did, and he was always like yeah. the only guy that could ever keep up with me running, and we were both on the same team, so we just split <laughs> that. So, but yeah, yeah I, don't I don't remember which one I was in. We I had uh, oh gosh the the. Uh, literature teacher was it Mr. Gorell? So was was that his name? Uh, no, no, Mr. Coffee. Mr. Coffee. Oh uh, yeah, then we weren't in the same one because I remember mine was uh, the history teacher. What was her name? <laughs> I remember. I only remember, yeah. remember Mr. Coffee and Miss yeah, Anna. Yeah, those are the only two I remember yeah. too. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> sorry if you're watching this. And we don't remember. <laughs> so when did when did the decision kind of was it was it already there in in your head back then in seventh eighth grade? Is it, did you know that that's what you want to do with your life? Um, I enjoyed it. It was something that you know my mom catered a lot outside of teaching, and so it's something that I was always around a lot. Um, and cooking was always big. You know, my dad cooked a lot. My mom cooked a lot. 
we just had a lot of home cooked meals and I always enjoyed being a part of that. Um, what, what would they cook? What it, was it more like the, cause like my family, it's like fried chicken and you know, just like, Oh, we, we, yeah, we had, stuff. yeah, we had quite a bit of that, you know, quite a bit of that stuff. My mom would make, you know, 700 different types of casseroles and um, 700 exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I mean, I, it was always That's a big joke impressive. growing up was, you know, what number casserole is this? Like 1,042. <laughs> every night it was like a different casserole or something. You don't see a lot of casseroles anymore. They were pretty big for a long time. I mean, oh, no yeah. one in my family really cooks them We have anymore. like one broccoli. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, she did. You, every vegetable, she would have like a specific casserole for that vegetable. And, yeah, I remember going to different <laughs> things growing up and I'm like, green bean casserole? What is this concoction? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you're she, like used yeah. to it. You're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, it was great. I mean, you know, it was it was it was great growing up. You know, getting to experience all that. Um, and then, you know, kind of once I got into high school, I did it a little bit more. Um, you know, I worked for Thompson's Catering a lot in the summertime, um, and enjoyed it. Uh, and then once I got to college, I kind of explored a couple of different things. Um, but I took one summer. I'm and really interested in what these things are, because like now that you're you're in cooking like i can't imagine you doing anything else so well i mean I, you know i just kind of like explored some other things while i was in college you know i took some um you know i took some some health classes some psychology classes um you know um i would guess history i'll go i love history i mean it's always been my favorite subject it's always been my favorite thing to learn about something i'm still really passionate about um i love to read about it watch movies yeah. watch history Same channel way. all that stuff all the time um you know, took quite a few law enforcement classes at EKU and stuff, you know, just thinking about some other stuff. But uh, I took one summer and went to Colorado. Uh, I was working in restaurants in Lexington uh, while I was in college, but I took one summer, moved to Colorado and stayed with my aunt and worked in a restaurant that her company owned. Uh, what part of Colorado? In Boulder. Okay. Uh, so she lives in Longmont, uh, but the restaurant was in Boulder, so I'd stay with her and then drive to which is like 10 minutes Like away. a month in Colorado last year, so I was just wondering. I was That's in Colorado great. Springs and, and then Denver for work, so it was, it was Yeah, it's great. Cool. My my mom's side of the family lives, okay, lives out there. Okay, cool. I was I surprised it. how dry it was. I miss it. Oh, it's great. Oh, yeah, Mike was there for the so week. beautiful. It's, yeah. I almost didn't leave. It was it was hard to leave. Um, I'm trying to find a way to go back. <laughs> <laughs> but after that... Um, I came home and I was like, this is it. Like, this is what I want to do. Yeah. And so I started looking for opportunities. And So how were you when that clicked? Um, 2008. I'm bad, I'm bad with math. I just, I just told you. Miss Hannah's probably watching this right now. Yeah. Going, I can't count. <laughs> <laughs> this guy taught you, better, taught you better than that. Um, <clears throat> I cheated, Miss Hannah. I cheated. <laughs> oh, my class. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, I mean, I think I turned 21 when I was in Chicago, or when I was in Colorado. So I was I was 21, and I was like, yeah, this, okay. is, this is it, I'm doing it. <clears throat> what were you doing when we were 21, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> we were living in Richmond, because I had my 21st birthday at Hooters. No, for we, we, just moved to, we just moved to Owensboro, too, right after at 21. Sure, so that, yeah. we had no idea what we wanted to do in our life. <laughs> <laughs> so still yeah. don't. Still don't. 2008, though, was a hard time. It was a hard time in the restaurant industry in Colorado as well. Because I know I worked in Lexington, and that was it was not a very good time then. Yes. No, it wasn't. It was tough. Yeah. You know, it, was, it was tough, and I... Um, I decided to move to Chicago. Um, I had a friend of a friend who was opening up a restaurant, and so I moved. So I drove up to Chicago, met this guy. Um, he said he would help me find a job until his restaurant opened. Um, enrolled in culinary school up there, and uh, waited about a year until his restaurant opened. How long? How long is the process for culinary school? Is it like? Um it, it depends. Uh, some places you can go and do a six six month course. Some places you can take a two year or one year. Um, with the amount of college that I'd already had, I only needed six months. Okay. I only needed. I had all the prerequisites, all the prerequisite yeah. stuff. So I only needed the food classes. So I got to do the six month course. Oh, that's cool. So you got to skip all the boring stuff. Yes. <laughs> Was there anything in particular that surprised you about it? Because. I don't, I mean, I, I keep everything that I cook simple. I can't imagine going in and, and learning about palettes and different flavors and what does this and what does that. And, you know, it just seems like it would almost be like blow my mind the amount of things that go. Yeah. Through. I mean, it's, um, <clears throat> it's one of those <clears throat> careers that you can never master it. You can never learn everything there is to learn. You know, I don't care if you're Thomas Keller or 
Julia Child or any of the greatest chefs or cooks that any you know anybody could ever talk about, there's always something to learn. There's always something new. There's always something different. Um, it'd be really boring if it wasn't anything innovative. It, it would be, it, and it is. It is definitely not boring. There's nothing boring about it. You learn something new every day. You learn see something different every day. Something surprises you every day. I mean, that's that's what I really enjoy about it. Very cool. So, <clears throat> how long were you? I remember the Chicago. I remember you being up there. Uh, seeing posts and, and different things like that. So about a year after you said you enrolled in culinary school, the restaurant started, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what what was your position or role in that? Did you go automatically to chef, or did you have to like? Um, so start? I surprisingly was uh, his sous chef, um, wow. which I was not ready for in any way, <laughs> shape, or form whatsoever so how fancy is this joint we're talking about is it like super um, fancy like so it was a it was a really really nice high-end uh neighborhood restaurant um so you know neighborhood restaurants in chicago are not anything like a chain They're not, not like applebee's no <laughs> <laughs> um so you know my first so when i first moved up to chicago my first job um and i love to tell the story uh, was at a place called Flub It Up Chubbs Hot Dog Emporium. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I saw a picture that you yeah. put of a hot dog up like yeah. recently, mm -hmm. right? So when I, I went up to Chicago, um, I guess it's uh, it's probably about a year and a half now um, to interview and do a tasting for the job that I had in Memphis, and I had to I go there every time I go to Chicago. I have to stop there. That's um, funny. And I have to get a hot dog and say hello to the owners. Is it like gourmet hot dogs or no, like no, it's straight a, up? It's a it's a Chicago style hot dog, steamed on a bun, covered in a bunch of stuff. That's Here awesome. <laughs> and uh yeah, it was uh it was a it was an interesting first job. Um, you know, I didn't I didn't really know anybody up there. I didn't you know <clears throat> I had a wildly expensive apartment in an area of town that I couldn't afford, and I needed a job um, while I was going to school. Um, so I made about nine fifteen hours steaming hot dogs, wow. wearing a T-shirt that said "Came in hungry, left with a chubby." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it was no, great. Not it was one of great. the finest moments in the whole chef career. Huh? Hey, you know, it, it's it's one of those careers. Somewhere. Yeah, it's one of those careers where um, <clears throat> nothing's really given to you. You, yeah, you have to work good. really hard for it. Um, you know, some people get a few things handed to them in this career, but it's one of those careers that will chew you up and spit you out. <laughs> I'm sure that you didn't have any problems like creating your own social group up there though, because like, I've never thought you to be a, like an impersonal person, <laughs> you know, it seems like you probably did <clears throat> pretty quick, right? Yeah. Um, I met some really great people up there. Um, you know, uh, I met some met some great people in culinary school that I still talk to today. Awesome. Um, They're good friends of mine. Um, my friend Jeff, uh, you know, cooked for his wedding. Was in his wedding. Um, my friend Rick. Dang, that's a lot of hats to wear. Cook yeah. in it. It's, it's <laughs> yeah, annoying it was, enough. It was, to be it, was it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. They did. Um, I never seen anything like it. They did wedding camp. So they rented a camp, like a like a summer campground in Wisconsin. <laughs> For a whole week. If they didn't have square pizza, I'd be right, man. Yeah. And we, it, was, it was amazing. And we all got to go up there and spend like a whole week just at this camp. Oh, very cool. And just be outdoors and stay in a cabin. And oh, it was amazing. It was the coolest thing I've ever done. That's, that's a really interesting idea. Cooked a couple of whole pigs. And yeah, it was oh, a lot of fun. Sounds delicious. It was a lot of fun. Um, and then, you know, my, my really good friend Rick, um, I actually performed his wedding. Um, I was actually, he was, he was probably my best friend in Chicago. Um, and I was really mad because he didn't ask me to be in his wedding <laughs> and we were out drinking one night. And so I said something to him about it and his now wife were there and she started laughing. She's like, well, I guess we got to tell him now cause he's all mad about it. Like, yeah, well we want you to perform our marriage. So, so you had to go get like, <clears throat> I had to go get ordained family. and, uh, yeah, perform, perform their marriage. Did you keep that up? Are you still ordained? Um, I didn't tell me that it ran out. So, I don't know. so he had holy man on tears I should, today. Yeah. I should have uh, washed my mouth when he walked yeah. in. <laughs> yeah, I've got you it framed. It's on my wall and everything. Yeah, it's awesome. That's uh, hilarious. So that was be called a reverend. <laughs> I don't. I don't reverend know chef. what. I, yeah, I don't know what chef it's the title. His, is. Holy, his holiness, the chef. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I did that for them, and uh, they've got two kids now, and have been married for 
don't know, four, five years or something, wow. six years or something. <laughs> Man, the stories uh, just keep di- getting deeper with you. Yeah. Um, so how long were you, how long did you spend up in Chicago? So uh, about eight years. I'm picturing like a Malone's. Is that kind of like the restaurant? Um, I, it's, it's even more, it's even more than that. Wow. Um, you know, we did everything from scratch every day. Um, you know, I would get there. It was probably, it was, it was pretty, it's the hardest job of my, of my career. Um, I was, I was young. I didn't really have the experience to be doing what I was doing. Um, I pretty much just got through it on just sure yeah. work ethic. I mean, that was, it. Uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty much it. Um, very limited oversight from the chef. He wasn't there a lot. Um, it was just figure it out, get it done, make it happen. Um, I'd get there every day about nine o'clock in the morning, uh, walk to work and work until about one, two, three in the morning. And go home, <clears throat> sleep for a couple of hours, come back, do it all over again. I did that. Isn't it amazing, like the things that yeah. your body can do at that age. Like, it, <clears throat> there's no way I could do that now. Yeah. We're like we're like 21 minutes into this, and I'm already ready for an hour. <laughs> yeah, there's no way. There's no way. But, I mean, it was just it was it was nonstop. I mean, it was nonstop, and it was you know seven days a week for almost a year. When you consume yourself into something like that, I bet you're like having dreams of it as well, like the three oh, or four hours you slept. Because I got the same nightmares. thing. You get, yeah, you have the tickets popping up, and you have like these dreams and dishes piling up, and it's, yeah, I never uh, thought I never thought of it, but I, I haven't like quite a few chefs came forward with like drug problems, so it's I can see, <laughs> I can see like, where most yeah. of, <laughs> that's what my you know worked with or been around. Yeah. yeah. TJ's on green. He's back there. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, um, you know, fortunately I was lucky enough to, to stay out of all that stuff. Oh yeah. Um, I, wouldn't, I was just making a joke. Like, no, no, no. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a big thing really? in the restaurant industry. I mean, cause I, I've heard of the, like the super famous ones, like having issues, but you know, I guess so it could be like all around, huh? Yeah, it is. Um, <clears throat> I, I've seen, I've seen some crazy stuff. Um, uh, you know, you name it, any sort of upper, it's been done in the okay. kitchen. <laughs> Hopefully, you just stuck to the Red Bull. <laughs> Do you, uh... I did, yeah, I drank a lot of Red Bull. I've drank probably entirely way too many energy drinks. Um, you know, I was doing those five hour energies for a long time. <laughs> just yeah. straight main line. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, it was an hour. hour. Um, yeah, Dave, it was I was crazy. to kind of backtrack, I was uh, talking to David, and David has worked in a lot of restaurants. Um, uh, in Lexington and everything like that and I was like <clears throat> he's a super guy awesome guy and he's like well that's kind of weird because I think sometimes chefs get a, like a little bit of a, a bad rap of being like maybe a little there's bit always harsh. like the stereotypical chef and it's like angry and fucked up <laughs> that's like, that's, like yeah, that's pretty stereotypical yeah uh, yeah you know covered in tattoos does a lot of drugs yells a lot so you're breaking the mold. Um, and also. I don't really do any of those things. I, I have just cussed in front of his holiness. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I definitely have yelled. You know, I definitely had a, a you know a time in my career where I did yell a lot. Yeah, yeah. you did. I did. Yeah, dude, I can't well, picture I'm, that. I'm like, yeah, I'm always like this peaceful guy, but in the kitchen, though, yeah. I was like that as well. I, you know, big fan of Kitchen Confidential. Is that? Yeah, it's great. I've read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've definitely so, read I mean, it. When I was like 18, 19, that was kind of like what shaped who I you know, was at the time. It was, it was a fun time. So. Yeah, it's a great book. Um, you know, you go through a lot of ebbs and flows, you know, through your career and, and really any career. Right. Um, but Just life in general. You know, I, I tried to take away from the chefs that I worked for who I didn't want to be as a chef. Um, Makes sense. Instead of kind of learning their habits because I worked for a lot of great chefs a lot of really really great chefs um, but also a lot of really crazy chefs as well. <laughs> um, and and there was a time where I did yell a lot and you know I was you know too aggressive in the kitchen and, and it was it was because of you know the right my way. own insecurities and then also not being able to not not really being ready for the positions that I was yeah. in and you know being you know in charge of you know there's a couple of, you know i was in charge of a kitchen um when i was working for this one restaurant group um, i'd only worked for them very briefly i was trying to get out of one situation and get into a better situation and i was kind of given this restaurant to just run with little to no oversight um, it was already failing um, it wasn't you know there, there wasn't a lot of good stuff going on there and so i was trying to fix it i was trying to save it i was working non-stop um, and I just wasn't in a good place and I was, I was an asshole 
For sure. That was a huge I even, asshole. I can't even picture that. I'm going to blame the Red Bull um, <clears throat> yeah. for getting you all keyed up because I don't know if I've ever heard you raise your voice in my Yeah, life. I don't like <clears throat> to do it. I really don't. Um, Did he yell in football? Once in a while. <laughs> not too much. No. Not too no, much. It's usually me and Matt and he's like the he's like the man and, and 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 us we were the yellow Mike, yeah it was Mike, definitely you your, your sure. natural voice is yelling so that's <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm a northerner he can attest to oh that. yeah I was in Chicago for a long time that is very normal <laughs> okay, okay. Well, it's extremely we'll normal. give you a pass I'm they all sound years, like they're yelling but all the time yeah I, I just can't like Mike has worked with me at a restaurant before and we're talking about fast food and I yelled but I was an idiot so I, I just can't really imagine but I guess like you said when you add all the pressure of uh, failing a restaurant and you know kind of being a little bit over your head which I imagine <clears throat> it's, it sounds like to me that you really get tested by fire in this business in this you industry. do you do a lot it's you know and and I, I kind of attest this to to football in a way that it's kind of like a next man up kind of a mentality mm. it's like you know this person failed this person couldn't do it Next, who you know, who's who's you <coughs> great know, analysis. Throw the dishwasher. Throw, up throw there. somebody else in there. <laughs> let's let's see me. what they can do. Let's see if they can see if they can make it work. You know, and and if not, they'll find somebody else. You know, so, immediately. So. So how long are we talking about in Chicago for you? I assume a pretty good amount of time. I was right? there, I was there for about eight years. Oh wow, was yeah. it that long? God, mm-hmm. we're old. <laughs> so yeah. you're, you're there for eight yeah. years. So um, how many different restaurants you worked at? It sounded like you um, quite a few. I you know I went to Chicago with a mindset that I wanted to get experience. I wanted to get my culinary degree and I wanted to get as much experience as possible. That Chicago's like one of the top, what, what probably five in the United States as far as like. Uh, I would say it's number one. You would think it's number. I one? would say it's number one. Gotcha. Um, you know I've been to a lot of other cities you know in the U S that say they're number one. You know, New York is really the only one that can go toe to toe with Chicago, just because of New York's sheer volume of restaurants. Um, but I think quality per capita, I think Chicago's got everything. I think Chicago has better pizza. Um, you know, I'm not a huge fan of that deep dish monstrosity that they call a pizza. It's more like a lasagna yeah. than it is a pizza. It's good. Yeah, yeah. I it's, mean, it's, it's still good. good. My heart. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'll eat it all the time. It's delicious. Right, right. But. If I want pizza, that's not what I'm going to get. If I want to eat until I can't breathe and see straight, that's what I'm going to get. Because, <laughs> um, I mean, they're just, it's, you know, it's, they're insane. So, they eight years of going through, uh, essentially, trial by fire, and you, you talked about visiting other cities. I'm really interested to hear about this because I'm sure it's giant for a chef to to really go experience different things and, and to, to bring little bits of that back um, to where... Uh, you know, you you take something from this and, and you make your own or, or whatever it may be. Uh, how many places did you travel to during that time? You, we got New York, so I'm yeah. Sure. So New York a couple of times. Um, I went to Charleston. Um, you know, while I was in Chicago, I you know I didn't take any vacation time. I didn't take any time wow. off. Um, what little vacation time I did have when I was working at a hotel, I took three weeks off and I went to Charleston and worked in a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> so you were all in. All I, in. That, I was, and that's you know I went I went up there for one reason. I didn't go up there to party or have a good time, or I went up there to. But you did build a little bit too, right? Of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, you can't be in the restaurant industry and not. Yeah, but, sounds like. Um, it. It, uh, that, that's what I was there for. I was there to you know expand my career and. and build a good resume and a good name for myself and be able to That's awesome. eventually, hopefully come back here, which is through many weird ways happened recently and, and come back here and, and open up my own restaurant eventually. But yeah, I can't wait to the hotel, day. but yeah, I mean, I, you know, uh, Memphis, Nashville, Charleston. Yeah, you said Memphis and it kind of threw me off because, um, I, for some reason, I thought you had worked in a hotel in Nashville, and so I guess I missed the Memphis one. Yeah, it was Memphis. Um, never lived in Nashville. Okay. Um, so but just... it was, yeah, I moved to Memphis um, last year. Um, was down there for 11 months opening up a hotel. Very cool. And uh, <clears throat> it was a great experience. Um, I learned a lot. Um, had to wear a lot of hats in that role. Um, dealt with a lot of construction issues, um, plumbing issues. Learned a <clears throat> lot more about plumbing than I ever, ever want to know. It's always good to have something to fall back on, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, the, I worked so much with the plumber um, trying to fix some of the issues that we had 
Um, he wrote on a piece of paper when we had it done, he, and he handed it to me, and he said, this is your certification. You're a certified turd chaser now. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty fun. Uh, but, yeah, I you know, learned a lot about construction and how to build a restaurant, how to build a hotel, you know, what goes into it, you know, how to make sure your construction guys are putting floor drains in and <laughs> all, those, all those fun things. Yeah, that sounds like... I mean, just things I would never even think about. Like I just expected you to go down there and be like, "Okay, we're gonna cook food." And like so. Yeah, and it's 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 so much more. I mean, it's it's ordering all your equipment. It's your uniforms. It's your certifications. It's your kitchen equipment. It's the flooring. It's it's lighting, electrical. It's it's so much that it it can be can be very overwhelming. So I assume at this point you're probably very versed in like building menus and stuff as well. <clears throat> I am. I would say so. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I, one of my I love you know creating menus. You know, I love cooking new things. Um, so I can't I can't wait for our kitchen to get finished uh, at the Marriott. It's going to be the first thing that's going to get finished. So I'll be able to get in there with my team and we'll be able to start cooking through the menu, start testing things out. Um, and that's to me that's the most fun is when you're in there with your your close core team members and you're just cooking and you're throwing ideas back and forth and trying things out and testing new things. Um, that's that's a lot of fun. How long does that process take typically? Is it kind um, of like uncharted waters for you at this point? It can it can take weeks or it can take days. You know the menu in Memphis, uh, we cooked it once, wow. and then presented it to ownership and they loved it. Awesome. Because uh, we were happy with it. You know, and then I've cooked menus at other places where it was like pulling teeth. It was a lot harder. It was a lot harder to to kind of get the things going. Um, you know, to, to try to find the, the proper menu and the proper balance of, of different things. And, um, you know, and it's also different, you know, what demographic you're cooking for, where you are, you know, geographically in the U.S. Right. You know, a lot of the things that I cooked in Memphis are going to be very similar to what I cook here because I feel like the palates are very similar from working in both the cities, eat a lot of the same foods. Um, but at some of the restaurants in Chicago... <clears throat> And some other places I've been, you know, you you cook things very differently for different right, people because right. people expect different things. Um, so here it's going to be pretty similar to what I did in Memphis. Very cool. And you, you mentioned kind of getting back here. So you had Chicago, Memphis, and then you did like, was it just like stance in Nashville and, and Charleston? Um, so <clears throat> Charleston was just a, a three-week like stage is what they call it. Uh, so you go and you work somewhere for free. Are you familiar with all this? A guy I worked with did the same thing for like a month in Charleston. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's called a stage. Stage. Uh, so you go and work for free. Cool. Uh, Learn all kinds of stuff today. <laughs> yeah, you, you basically just go somewhere and work for free. So it's oh, for, for, for two. Free. Yeah, so it's totally no tips, for free. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, Whoa. it's totally for free. <laughs> so you do it for two reasons: one, to get a job. Um, so some of your more high-profile places will require you to do a stage before you get hired to make sure you're the right fit. Or for the second reason, you do it to get experience. So I did it for the experience. So I went and worked at Husk in Charleston. So Sean Brock is the executive chef there, and he's opened up multiple Husks now. So he's got one in um, he's got one in Nashville, Charleston. Um, he's got one in Georgia, maybe no, it's not Athens, uh, Savannah, Georgia, and I think he's getting ready to open up another one. And they're all based on southern cuisine so okay they don't have, i was gonna ask you what kind of cuisine it was it's all southern so they don't serve anything or cook anything that doesn't come from the south very cool so everything comes from the south and so the one in tennessee focuses on as much tennessee product as they can get the one in very charleston cool. is as much you know charleston area and south carolina product that they can get um, so it's a really cool concept, uh, something that's that's important to me. So I, I wanted to go down there and see it and see how it worked. Sure, it was like a, a different world, you know, there if you're doing southern cooking as far as versus Chicago. Very different, very different. You know, <clears throat> Chicago, we had access to anything in the world. Um, Charleston was a little bit different. So I think the adversity of not being able to get everything pushed them to find new ingredients and change things up and find new flavors. Um, and also their access to fresh fish was unbelievable. Yeah. You know, we'd be in there working and prepping and this guy would come in with a cooler full of fish and they'd all still be alive. I mean, wow. that's, you know, that's, you can't beat that. No, you ain't getting that in Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I mean, you know, you got the fish show up at like 2.30 and it's on somebody's plate at 6. 
you know, that, that's – you can't beat that. No, no. And so you did the stop in Charleston. Was it the same type of deal in, in Nashville? Um, so I, I, I just kind of hung out in Nashville. I didn't really, like, stay there. I just kind of in and out, checking out restaurants and stuff. Um, I had a friend who um, works at a restaurant called Catbird Seat, which is one of the best restaurants in the country. Um, so I went there and ate. Um, yeah, not not as serious in Nashville as it was in. in gotcha. So a little bit more like a downtown. Yeah. Have you have you traveled to any different countries to check out cuisine or is no, that something on the bucket list? <clears throat> Unfortunately, not. You know, with and that's something that I haven't done that I really want to do is, is travel a little bit more and, and experience some cuisines outside of the U.S. Um, I've been lucky enough to experience, you know, all the great ones in the U.S. and, and, and see how it's done and, and even, you know, being in Memphis and seeing how real, true barbecue is made yeah. um, was, was a great experience. Um, but, you know, with, with not taking any vacation time or anything like that, it's, it's been really hard to, to set up any time to kind of travel outside of the um, country. So, but it's definitely on the bucket list once you oh, become a little sure. bit more established. For and, sure. And, uh, yeah, hopefully once we get this hotel open um, and we get some things running, we have we have a, a really good system set up where I think we're going to have, uh, I think I'll have some time to do some, do some cool. traveling and exploring. So how did it work out to be able to facilitate you moving back here? Um, um, well, <clears throat> so I was, I was at the as executive chef at the Hyatt uh, downtown, the one connected to Rupp Arena for a little bit. Um, and things kind of weren't moving in the direction that I wanted them to move there. So that's why I reached out to a friend, um, found the Memphis job, moved down there. Okay, so you, you did a little bit of stop here before going to I Memphis. did, yeah. Okay. So I came back, was here for a little bit, and then moved to Memphis, and now I'm back again. Gotcha. <laughs> hopefully for the last time. Um, yeah, hope hopefully, so. Hopefully won't be moving around too much more. Um, so then, you know, I was down in Memphis. It was a great opportunity with a great company. It just wasn't moving in a direction that I that I wanted it to move in. Um, and so we, you know, I, I gave him like a month and a half notice or something and started looking. Uh, and then a guy that I used to work with at the Hyatt was our front office manager. Um, we were just randomly talking on, you know, probably Facebook or text message or something. And he told me that they needed a chef for the Marriott because he's gonna be our front office manager at the Marriott. And he sent me the link and he was like, apply. I was like, all right, I'll apply. And uh, did it, flew up here, had an interview and got the job. Awesome. So how long have you been back? A um, couple couple months, couple months, not uh, four months, three you, months. I think you, uh, from what I've seen, you've kind of dabbled with other restaurants as well, is that right? Um, <clears throat> I haven't really done anything since I've been back. Oh. Uh, I haven't cooked at all. I haven't worked in a kitchen. I've been sitting in an office from eight to 4.30 every day, which is not, good for me <laughs> um, I don't usually know what to do with myself sitting in an office all day um, but we've got quite a bit of stuff to do to, to prep and get ready for this for this hotel opening so we, we've been able to stay relatively when, busy. when is the opening uh, so the opening is scheduled for November 22nd oh wow so yeah. pretty soon right around the corner okay and do you have an idea of kind of what you want to do with um, with the menu and stuff like that? Yeah, the the menus are all done. Uh, so we have two restaurants on property. Uh, so we have uh, the Great Room concept, which is a Marriott-ish standard uh, restaurant, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, uh, with some local Southern flair on it. Um, so <clears throat> one thing that was really attractive about Marriott is they give their chefs a lot of freedom. You know, a lot of these big hotel groups that you go and work for, it's, here's your menu. Oh, you're in this quarter of the United States. Here you go. Here's your menu. This is what you're going to cook. Uh, Marriott's not like that. They're, Very cool. Um, their room service menu is 95% standard. Yeah. Their great room menu <clears throat> is relatively standard. Um, but they allow you to have a lot of freedom with changing up ingredients, keeping it seasonal, keeping it local. And they, they push you to do that. Um, which was really attractive for me. And then our crown jewel is our rooftop restaurant. Uh, so we're gonna have a rooftop uh, right on Main Street. Um, it's gonna be a little over 100 seats with a bar um, and a rooftop uh, relaxation pool. It's not like a full size Ooh. pool. Um, it's shallow, but it's it's a nice pool. You can have a drink next to it. There'll be some very cool plants and stuff up there. It'll look nice. Yeah, It'll be stuff. fun. <laughs> I don't know. I don't design. I don't design stuff. I'm just. You know, yeah, there's gonna be some plants and stuff. You can have some drinks. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. 
Uh, you have um, me a drink, so I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, there, there's there's going to be nothing like it in downtown Lexington, and nor has Lexington seen anything like it. Uh, retractable Ooh. roof, so you know if the weather's nice, you can Sounds amazing. open it up. It's it's going to be it's going to be really really special. Um, so that's kind of our crown jewel, and they gave us full autonomy over the menu up there. Um, so it's going to be, you know, we, we've brought together a really, really talented group of people. Did you get to select hotel. those people or did you have, I mean, I had to say, say, I had a say in it. Um, and pretty much I've helped interview everybody that's been hired since I got hired, which I would say was probably pretty important, right? It is. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very important. You know, I think we have a great team. Um, our director of food and beverage came from, um, came from Charlotte. Uh, our, uh, beverage director, he came from DC. Uh, and all these people are very well traveled. They've been around the U.S. They've, right. they've done some amazing stuff. Um, got a great banquet chef. Got a great pastry chef. Uh, still looking for a restaurant chef, but you know we've got a great team. Uh, there's going to be some amazing <clears throat> cocktails on that rooftop. We've been testing cocktails for weeks now. Mm, so that's best, a hard job. Best part of best part of work <clears throat> is at the end of the day we test out a couple of cocktails. Um, but he's super talented. Makes some really great classic cocktails. Um, like I would assume a little bit of Kentucky influence in that. Of course, yeah, we have quite a few bourbon cocktails on the menu, um, and just having a lot of really good, a lot of fun with that, a lot of fun with bourbon. So yeah, any, any <laughs> yeah. bourbon's fun, right? Yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be really fun on that rooftop. Lots of great cocktails, lots of great drinks, good wine, good beer, um, great food. Um, the food's gonna be. It's not gonna. We don't really see it as a place where people are gonna come and sit down and have like a three course meal. Um, so we're making it lots of shareable items, um, lots of plates so you can just kind of order a couple, two, three, four things for the table, share it, eat, drink, you know, have a good time up there. And I was assuming this was this will be open to the public, correct? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. But of most course. likely you probably have to make it's like a more of like a reservation. Um, we are trying to not have to make people make reservations for the rooftop, but we think it's going to be so packed that I can't imagine for at least a few couple of years or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, we think yeah. it's going to be so packed that we're going to have to figure out some sort of a some sort of a system. Yeah, padding TJ's uh, travel money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. That sounds great. Yeah, I can't imagine. I mean, it just sounds like. You know, like you said, nothing that Lexington has. Um, I don't think I've ever been anything like that. Um, no, I mean, the only really other place that has a rooftop is Bell's. And we're on the eighth floor, and they're on, like, the third, third. or something. Yeah. I work at Bell's. <clears throat> Mike tells people out lots of places. He likes to tell me. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, I mean, that just yeah. sounds fascinating. Um, especially with, like, the way the downtown's kind of transforming, you know. It is. It is. I mean, it, it's... Um, <clears throat> You know, it's one of the biggest things to happen in Lexington. Probably the biggest thing to happen in Lexington in my lifetime. Uh, I don't remember any other large it's been construction. It's a long time in their making, too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's been a very long time. So long in the making. Is uh, Jeff Ruby's open yet? It is. Mm -hmm. It is yeah. very open and it is very delicious. Yeah. I would most <laughs> definitely recommend going and checking it out. I had the one in Denver and I wasn't blown away. This one is very good. Uh, it's very, very good. Yeah. They they do a very good job. Their service is spectacular. Uh, the food is. It's probably the right time to go, right? Yeah. Because they have to kind of set the precedent, mm -hmm. you know, to to try to do this. I I need to look it up, but I went to this local place in Colorado Springs, one of the best steaks I've ever had. And then I went to Jeff Ruby's like a week or two later, and I was kind of let down by it. Uh, so I need I definitely need to try them. This is a good one, and they you know they I know who they get their meat from. They get their meat from a great company in Chicago that dry ages steaks for them. You know, ships them down every day. It, it's it's good. It's Pretty very very good. Yeah, very very good. So uh, we've got you got kind of the timeline and everything going with that. You got your menu set up and stuff like that. And uh, really wanted to try to transition to like um, some some different topics that that I had in mind like. Um, like the wild game stuff, if that's okay with you. Um, you yeah, know, it's like one of those things where <clears throat> I talk to a billion people about hunting and um, everybody's always like, oh, it's got the gaming taste, blah, blah, blah. For me personally, I haven't really experienced that. I, you know, kind of did a little bit of research and learned how to repair the stuff and, and you know, especially venison uh, with a lot of steaks and different things like that. I just experimented a lot. Um, and uh, it's just something that I'm really interested in and so I would assume that most of your cooking probably um, evolves revolves around like bird right it does yeah I'm much more of a bird hunter than 
Anything so else. you duck hunt a lot, mm -hmm. right? I've seen a lot of duck hunting pictures. Duck and geese um, are my bread and butter. Gotcha. And then you dove hunt as well. Mm -hmm. and Love dove hunting. Do you, do you experiment? Like, is it, is it something where you work so much here at the restaurant? You you kind of mentioned earlier when you get home, you kind of like you're not. <coughs> um, don't have I don't. Stance. Yeah, I don't do too much at home, but I do. I do like to. Uh, I do like to cook everything that I kill. Um, <coughs> big proponent of that. Um, <coughs> But uh, I experiment a little bit at home. Uh, I know last, well, right before I moved to Memphis, um, I bought quite a bit of kitchen equipment, um, a big Cabela's uh, dehydrator. Oh, wow. Um, started making some duck and goose jerky. Oh, wow. Um, cause That's very had, interesting. I've never heard of anybody doing that before. It was delicious. It was really good. Some weren't so good. You know, I think I did, um, I was living with Jake Puckett at the time, and uh, I think I think I did like 10 or 12 different trial batches and let them run and we try it and some were great, some were not great. Yeah, so um, you got at least a, like, a, like a, I guess a base to-, to Yeah, get. I've got a couple of good bases that I can kind of build off of with some flavor. Um, but we had, we had such a great season that we had so much meat, didn't really know what to do with it all. Oh wow. Um, so I was like, well, make some jerky. And did it and it was good. It was really good, had some, had some really good turnouts with that um i've got a great I, I bought a smoker around the same time so i love to awesome. i love to smoke duck and goose breasts um more i like to smoke the goose breasts than the duck yeah i've heard that uh, goose i i've never had duck i don't think i've never had duck or geese i've had a lot of dove but never duck or goose. <clears throat> duck's great um you know you don't really have to do too much to it i've heard that like i guess there's a difference in ones that uh i guess kind of forage in the water is that true do you um there's true? a there's a little difference, but you know, you'll talk to some old timers that won't shoot any of the diving ducks. They're like, oh, they eat, you know, snails and fish and stuff, and they taste like they taste like rotting fish. I don't think they do. You don't buy that? No, I think they. I think they're fine. I do think you think it's because good. you know how to prepare it, though? Do you think that a lot of people just you know <clears throat> slap it and whatever? I don't even know how you really the different ways to cook. I that. mean, that's that probably has a little something to do with it, um, but probably not too much. I mean, I I think it's I think all. All the ducks I've ever had, I think, were really, really good. You know, and really and smoking. smoking is their preferred way to do it, especially. I, I love smoking them, uh, especially geese. Um, geese, go goose is really is really weird because it's it's fatty and greasy and dry at the same time. So it's it's really hard to cook without making it, and it's also incredibly tough. Um, incredibly tough meat, so it's got to be low and slow for a long time, and you got to protect it. So I usually brine it um, in quite a bit of salt and sugar, um, and then <clears throat> at least overnight usually to kind of help it a little bit. And then um, I'll do one of two techniques. So I'll wrap it in bacon, throw it in the smoker, and let it smoke for six, seven hours um, until it's it gets... Really good. Yeah, it, it's great. I did it for... Um, two years ago, I did it for the Florida game. Uh, Florida UK game. We had a big tailgate, and it took a whole bunch of smoked goose out there. Yeah, um, I, that's the way that I typically have, have had dove is just with like the jalapeno and the cream. Oh cheese yeah, everybody. Yeah, everybody yeah. does that, and it's delicious. Is there any other way that you cook dove? Or prepare? Um, I like to pan sear it. Hmm. Um, just pan sear, roll around in the pan a little bit, a little bit of butter, some fresh herbs, and some. Garlic. You don't have to do as much to that as I no, was, no. It's delicious. Yeah, it's pretty by good. itself. You don't have to do much to it at all. I don't brine it or anything. I mean, it's so small and so little. Um, yeah, it's does pretty simple. But the ducks and the geese, you have to do a little bit more to. Um, I also use a technique called sous vide a lot. Um, so it's it basically means under pressure. So you put it in a vacuum bag, it sucks all the air out, <coughs> seals it shut. And then you have something called an immersion circulator, which circulates the water at a perfect temperature. Uh, so it's in depth. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, a, it's a technique you'll see a lot used in restaurants, um, especially with steaks and stuff, to get them perfect. Um, you can circulate it to a, to the proper temperature, or say you know if you want to hit if you want your steak to be 130 degrees, you circulate yeah. it like 120, 115, and then you sear it in a pan or sear it on the grill, you know, really hard, and you get that crust on the outside. And it's perfectly. You're making me hungry. Yeah, it's, <laughs> me too. <clears throat> and it's it's perfect all the way through. So that you know, so you don't get that if you order steak medium rare and you have that really red piece, and then you've got quite a bit of pink, and then you've got quite a bit of gray. With this technique, it's you're perfect. Like 
light red, you know, to dark pink, right in the center of the entire piece of meat is like that. So doing that with, with duck and goose is that you can put it in there with a lot of different flavor elements, butter, herbs, garlic, whatever, whatever you want to flavor it with. Um, and then you can circulate it in that water bath for an extended period of time and it will never overcook. So it's a great way to tenderize the meat. Um, so you can, you know, I throw a goose breast in there. I've even done goose legs before. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, because um, I was going to ask you about wild turkey next, if you had experimented with that much. And that's one of the big the big problems with wild turkey is that the legs are so tough because yep. they're on them all day long. They're so tough. And yeah. um, I've, uh, I've filleted it off before. And I had pretty good luck with that. I just kind of mixed it in with the breast meat. Um, but uh, have you cooked any wild turkey at all? Yeah, I've smoked them a couple of times, but they're Sounds usually like they're usually a little too lean um, for the amount of time that they have to be in the smoker. Yeah. Um, did you do it as a whole bird, just like pluck the whole? No, bird? it was in pieces. It yeah. Was, yeah, I've heard that that's pieces. the best way to do it, but it's so. Yeah, the best way to do it is a whole bird, but so if you kill a turkey before. Yes. <laughs> Just like just like cleaning a whole you know duck or goose if you don't have a plucker takes forever yeah it's a lot of work um, you know I mean you know turkey legs they're not gonna be much bigger than that so I would suggest you know sous vide I mean I think that's the best way you can put lots of fats in there whether it be oil or butter or you know I've used uh, I've used like different charcuterie meats before um, are, you, are you familiar <laughs> with Stephen Ranella? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. uh, he does a lot of like the high end stuff like that. Oh yeah, and yeah. He he knows his stuff. I've watched a lot of his stuff, and he knows yeah. what he's doing. I've got the the cookbook actually. So yeah, I do too. He's great. Yeah, he I'm definitely sure you knows. Don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I have my cookbook collection. When we moved, when we moved to Memphis, I don't know why I didn't like realize how big it was. But when when I moved back from Memphis. I have way too many cookbooks. <laughs> way too many cookbooks. Yeah. I'm sure all your friends were like avoiding the cookbook uh, boxes. Uh, oh god, yeah, it was. What awful. You got in your rocks? <laughs> yeah, there's it's so many, they're so heavy. Yeah, I, I, I definitely realized how many I had when I moved back from Memphis. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I've only been hunting. This is my seventh season, so I'm like, I feel like I'm an infant when it comes to everything. So like the cooking kind of, you know, it gets more and more every year too. But um, I'm lazy, man. Like. <laughs> Um, I don't I don't see how like you go and you cook all day and then you get your free time and then you're cooking again. I would I would think that it would be like, you know, just too much. Like you know, I love just take it. the easy way. Yeah, you I love, love it. it. I love cooking and I love hunting. Um uh, and so being able to combine the two is so much fun. Yeah. So much fun. Um what about the you know, like the more red meat stuff like uh deer, I assume that you probably dabbled a little bit in venison. Yeah, you know, venison's great, you know, and I you know, I think a lot of people who say it's too gamey are people who grew up eating, you know, Walmart ground beef every day. It has to be because they're like, I never want to kill a big buck. That's the reason I kill little bucks. And I'm like, okay. And then like it tastes, <laughs> you know, it tastes like that. But that's one of the best bucks I've ever eaten. And yeah. he's the oldest by far. So, you know, and a, and a lot of it is what the animal is eating. You know, oh. a lot of it is. They're pretty corn fed around yeah. here. <laughs> and, and, and most of them are, you know, and, and a lot of our ducks and geese are, are corn fed, you know. I, I didn't think about that. It, it, they, a lot of them eat a lot of corn. Can you, um, do you think you could tell the difference, like by taste or by look? Uh, you can, I, I, not I'm sure by you can look, with beef, uh, right? By look, you can a little bit. Uh, their fat, the color, the color changes okay. um, on their outer ring. It'll, it'll get a little bit more yellow. <laughs> Uh, and then I took a picture, it might have been two or three seasons ago, I took a picture, and I might have posted it on Instagram, of a goose that I killed really late season, and I walked over to pick him up, and corn fell out of his mouth. And I opened his mouth and looked down, and he had stuffed himself with so much corn, he was still eating it when he flew, That's when he flew crazy. over to us. That's crazy, and but I can see You it. can see it all the way down. You could see all the way down his throat, and he was just chocked full of corn. That's crazy. Yeah, um, you know, I'm sure that you're familiar with like a blueberry bear, where they like literally seek out these high mountain bears that eat blueberries, mm -hmm. and they said the fat's like purple, so you can tell the difference. Yeah, it, so. it does. You know, and there's a a chef that that has recently started to to do some stuff like that out of New York. Uh, he's in upstate New York, so they raise a lot of their own animals. So they raise a lot of their own chickens. So they feed them red pepper mash. Wow. And the eggs 
come out with the yolks and they're red instead of yellow. Wow. Yeah. So it's I've seen orange before. Yeah, you they know. are I mean like this color red. Wow. They are red. That's and crazy. So there's there's a lot of really cool stuff with that and, and what these animals eat greatly affects the way that they taste. Yeah. Well mine are very, very healthy. They've been well fed for four to five years, <laughs> crossing hundreds of not. Yeah, I mean, of and you can you can tell you can tell yeah. a lot with ducks and geese because you can see the golf course geese that are like snipping at grass all day. They come in and they have like a really tiny fat layer, and they're kind of big and clunky. And then you get the ones that are migrating, and they've been eating corn all the way down, you know, to get to us to, in Kentucky, and they've got yellow fat and. Not as much meat and thicker fat, and you can you can tell it's it's it greatly affects how they look, how they taste. Um, yeah, that's. I mean, I've never thought about it that in depth until like we kind of you kind of mentioned it, and I'm sure that there is a giant difference if just if you have like a grass fed versus a corn fed. Um, have you? Do you have any like tips for venison? Is there any like tricks that you do um, aside from? Well, I can't even say that. The <laughs> sous vide. Sous -vide. <laughs> yeah, you know. I mean, I love sous vide, and it's we're one of the only countries, if not the only country in the world, where it's illegal that you can't just do it without getting a permit. Wow. Um, so in restaurants, you have to get a permit wow. to be able to do it. Um, every other country in the world should do it. So is that is that <clears throat> similar to like how you get the wagyu beef and all that? Uh, no, that's that's literally done by overfeeding them with gotcha. very high so protein. So it's different. It's like before yeah. versus after. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so this this just really helps to give you a perfect cook and if it's a if it's a really tough item, you know, you can if it's a really tough cut of meat, you can put it in there for an extended period of time. Like I'll do short ribs in there for like 72 hours. Wow. And they come out and it's just like falls apart. Yeah, it's, it's it. yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, and they're they're perfectly cooked and they're perfectly infused with the flavor. And that's another big thing with it is that you don't lose any flavor. And so there, that infusion is forced into the meat instead of, you know, if you're like braising short ribs in a pot, the flavor kind of dissipates throughout the entire thing. If it's in this vacuum pack bag, it's forced into the meat. So it's not going anywhere. It's not evaporating. It's not moving anywhere else. It's right there. Um, so that's, that's another thing. So, I mean, and it's something that is available at a relatively cheap price to anybody that wants to do it at home. I mean, I think I got my vacuum sealer at uh, Costco for like a hundred bucks and I vacuum seal all my meat. So yeah. any of our ducks something and I'm goose and everything, into. vacuum seal it, throw it in the freezer. It lasts twice as long. You don't get the freezer burn. And then you can also cook with it. And I think the uh, immersion circulator I bought was like 200 bucks. And it has an app with it, and so I've <clears throat> you can pretty much vacuum seal an entire meal in one of those bags and throw it in the freezer or throw it in the refrigerator, and you can turn the thing on on your way home. When you get home, drop it in there, take a shower, and by the time you're done, you've got a whole meal and you can just wow. eat it. It's pretty amazing what, with what you can do with these I'll things. Have to look into it. Yeah, sure. now you can find them a lot cheaper too. Like they get cheaper like every year. So yeah, yeah, they do. Some. I mean, as the technology evolves yeah. and as it becomes more of a mainstream thing, you know, I mean. I'm sure, cook or like um, smoked venison would be very good too, right? Oh yeah, you know, I love I love smoking deer. It's it's delicious. Um, what what the uh, cut do you I love strap? Smoke, smoking the whole back strap. It's. Yeah, I would think like a roast would be really good in there as well. Yeah, it's, you know, and, and I like to do, you know, a lot of people use the pellets and they use the, you know, it's automatically controlled. Mm -hmm. I like to do hardwood and like no pellets, no temperature control. Like a traditionalist when it comes to that. Yeah, it is. It's very, very traditional. So you still use like a, you don't use temperature control, you use field or do you still use so a I have I have four thermometers that, that gotcha. go into it at different areas, two that go into the meat and two that are in the chamber. And they also have apps that connect to my phone, so I can sit on the couch and have a beer and watch some football, and it'll beep and tell me if the temperature That's That's gets amazing. to the, gets to a weird spot, so I can make sure the temperature range is in the right area, and I can go out there and pull a log out or put a log in. If yeah, I, um, I definitely need to get a smoker. I, I did a little bit of stuff where I would like, you know, especially with the back straps, I would bake it for a certain period of time, and then I'll put it in yeah. like a. Um, Gosh, I don't like your uh, cast iron skillet mm -hmm. uh, and just essentially with butter uh, because I typically would like 
season in the refrigerator, you know, for a day or two. Oh yeah, yeah, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, good. So, a good marinating process is. You need, is you'll have key. to send me a recipe for that. I'm interested. One of my one of the biggest things, and I, I had to teach this to Jake when we were living together about marinating meats. You don't want to put. You don't want to marinate anything with a lot of acid. So you don't want to use like wine or vinegar or anything like that. Really. Yeah, because I've seen a lot of them with Italian dressing in them, and yeah, it breaks down. <clears throat> It will it will start to cook your meat, and so what happens is, is that it acts as a cooking process. So it will essentially sear the outside of your yeah, meat, and I've it won't allow any more penetration oh, okay. of flavor. Um, so it's just like throwing your meat on the grill. So it's it's basically you know osmosis. And I hope some of our teachers is listening, and they are you know I love they're not words. listening. They're, they're not like listening. thank God we're done. With those <laughs> uh, but it, it's it's osmosis. So it's you know the cells are trying to create an equilibrium so if they're getting cooked essentially nothing else can penetrate the cell wall that makes perfect sense to season yeah i've seen what you're talking about it almost yeah. it has a different color on the outside yeah it gets it gets i great. stopped using like the italian uh dressing because it was too acidic mm -hmm. uh, just tasting alone like yeah it, you bounce it out with like brown sugar or something like that but i'd be really interested to see if like you had any um, you know, like recipes for that. Or yeah, I've got, like I've got quite a few. I mean, for a quick marinade, it's great. I mean, I quick marinade chicken and stuff all the time with lots of acid. I love to cook with acid. It's my favorite thing to cook with. Um, I love, you know, different vinegars and, and cooking wine, stuff like that, and citrus. Love it. Um, and it's great for a quick marinade, but for a long-term process, we're going to have it in there overnight or a day or so. Yeah, I haven't found anything that I love yet. Um, I've even bought some of the bags, you know, that are like mm -hmm. pre-made and you stick the meat down in there. It's specifically for steak, yeah. um, but I've uh, I've actually used my, you know, whatever it may be, like backstrap, tenderloin. I used tenderloin last time. Uh, I tried two different ones and, you know, they're okay, but nothing that, I, like I said, I really love. Um, is is venison like the end of your dabbling as far as wild game or have you ever gotten into like elk or anything like that um i've done some elk um i've done some wild boar um because they're relatively available um and and they're kind of the same except for you know wild boar you know you i, I pretty much have prepared that every time just like i would normal pork um see I, i've always heard the kind of the same thing about wild boar tastes nothing you know versus like normal pork it doesn't taste the same uh, everybody that I've ever heard that prepares it pretty much smokes it. So, yeah, it's it's it, and it also depends on where where you get your your normal pork and what you're kind of used to. You know, if you get real well raised pork, <clears throat> pork's a red meat. Yeah, it's not white or pink or whatever it is you get at the grocery. It's a red meat yeah. if you look at it in its natural the way it's supposed to be. Um, so and and that's what it that's what it is in a, in a wild boar as well. It's it's dark red meat. It looks like steak. I mean, it looks like beef. Um, so it's it's great being smoked. I mean, it's great to you know smoke a whole wild boar shoulder. I mean, it's it's hard to beat that. Yeah. Um, what about the elk? Um, what did you did you just so essentially about prepare the same like ways, venison? Yeah, it's about the same way as venison. Um, it's usually a little bit tougher every time I've had it. So it usually needs a it's little very, very extra lean. time. Yeah, and it's it's a lot more lean. Um, so it usually needs a little bit lower and slower cooking. It's because nobody's feeding them a lot of corn. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah they're eating like whatever. Yeah, yeah. whatever they can find forage. Yeah. And I would assume like a Kentucky elk versus like Colorado elk would be completely different. Yes, but. and I've, most of the elk that I've had was from Colorado yeah. and, they, and they also travel a lot more oh definitely uh, and so they're you know it's a lot more like you said it's a lot more lean um it's they have a lot more muscle tissue built up so it's a lot tougher um but i think flavor wise it's, it's unbelievable yeah it's unbelievable i uh i went like in depth uh searching in colorado to try to find somewhere to go and i went and ended up at the buckhorn exchange have you ever been to that place in mm -hmm. denver it's it's been there since like I don't even know. It's been there since the railroads were there. Yeah, very, very. Yeah, it was 1800s for sure. And they have like, it's like a saloon inside, like all the old paraphernalia and stuff like that. And then, like I said, I ended up getting, uh, my appetizer was like an, a rattlesnake dip. <laughs> and then I ended up getting a steak and uh, um, then the, the elk steak as well. So it was, it was a really cool experience. But uh, um, I, I put in for the tag every year. I've just never got it. So yeah, I do too. I put in for it every year. Yeah, I didn't put it in for it this year. So I'll, uh, all the other six years I've done it, but this year I got my license really late because I didn't go turkey hunting, <clears throat> which I normally do. So how does that work? Do you hire have to hire a guide? 
where you have to go with some more. I don't think you necessarily have to do that. We'll just go to like a certain preserve. Yeah, there's like certain areas that do that. Um, I actually got a card here somewhere in the house with a guy that had like five acres of whatever it's called, reclaimed mine property. And he's yeah. like, if you ever get one, just hit me up. And so that's probably what I would do. I would probably contact him first and see if I could hunt on his property or if, if he even still has. You know, they're they're mostly accentualized in like the east and west, right? Like not a lot in the centrals out. Nothing as far as I know in central. Um, yeah, it's I like, think that they've maybe had some sightings like in Estill County. Estill County, yeah, but like that. So I've heard as well. But um, like TJ said, they travel so much, you know, a deer probably uh, covers like two to five square miles and I would say it's probably double. It's probably like five to ten. Yeah, total. the deer are pretty territorial. They like to kind of stay in. Yeah, it's annoying sometimes though because like <laughs> I'm looking at the same <laughs> yeah. pictures of deer for like years yeah. and I'm like, please another one come in just to and give they me know a, what day it like is a pallet. Just disappear. Yeah, every yeah. single one of these deer here um, and, and I've got more um, every single one of them I found on camera for you know, yeah they're they're definitely creatures of habit and from what I know about elk they are not and they like to travel yeah, I'm sure vast distances I can show you like I said pictures of every single one of these <laughs> multiple angles different areas um, and it's always just like a joy to have one that shows up out of the blue like oh I haven't seen yeah, that one before yeah. Yeah. and uh, sometimes it's really nuanced like sometimes you'll have them from the same lineage and it's hard to yeah. tell them apart until you get like a picture of them both together and like holy crap they're Different yeah, deer, so it's awesome. Just a, a lot of the interesting things. How how hard do you think it would be to have a wild game restaurant with all the rules uh, and regulations? It would be impossible. Impossible. It would be impossible. Um, it is illegal to sell wild game to the public. Why do you think that is? Uh, to keep down on poaching. Poaching. I would say I, that's that's you know, and I get it. You know, in England they have game preserves because of that reason um, because people would because it was legal and you could sell it to the public um, they had to move everything to game preserves so these rich families gave up their land for this these massive game preserves to such a bummer man it would be so cool to to you know have somebody like yourself make different dishes and, and be able to try it um i mean I know that whatever I, elk I ate, you know, obviously wasn't true to what else. Yeah, because you can like. you can buy wild boar and and you know venison and mm -hmm. elk and stuff in restaurants, but it's all it's all farm raised. Yeah, it's not it's not technically wild. No. What it, about, uh, have you tried anything else? Like uh, I've been really I really want to try moose now. I've had elk. I want to try. I've moose. I've had just about anything and everything. Any, anything in North America? What about yeah. bear? Um, I've had bear. Uh, it was actually pretty good. Because you hear bad things about bear too. Yeah, you do, and I think it's another one of those things where it's kind of depending on what it what it's, what it, what it's eating. You know, if it's a bear that's around the city and it's getting into a lot of trash, <laughs> or and, if it's eating carcasses versus blueberries, yeah, it may be, so. or you know, stuff like that. You know, I think it, I think it really depends on what what the bear's been eating. Because I've I've had the bear I had was delicious. It was really good. Was it uh, black or it was a black bear? Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I've that's heard black bears pretty good. I've had you know snakes and alligator and turtle and squirrel and I me mean, name it i've i've pretty much eaten it i haven't had squirrel i had alligator in florida i sought it out um i've had snake i had snake when i was little and then i had it again last year and the dip it was yeah, pretty good it was like chicken yeah so which i'm everything. surprised you've never had squirrel it no. seems like something mm -hmm. I always say I'm gonna do it, and then my hunting season always gets extended to where I don't I don't have enough energy because like at the end of whitetail season, I'm, yeah. you were there last year. I was like, oh man, <laughs> like I ended up shooting one that looks like that, and I had a bigger one that had been coming in, but I was just ready to be done. Yeah, um, you know, you're like shut down, shut down, like yeah, <laughs> it's exhausting. I mean, it's the same thing, you know, with with duck and goose hunting. I mean, you know, we had. You know, two seasons ago we had the best season we ever had so we were going out as much as possible yeah and by the last day of the season i mean we're just exhausted so how long has it been since you've you've uh deer hunting it's been a while uh it's been a little while yes yeah, it's, it's been it's been a little while um I'm, i've got a couple of places secured for this season so Sweet. I'm going out this awesome year. man I, yeah. I can't wait to follow that along I, I i'm gonna ask you on camera i wasn't planning on it but i'm going to i would really like to do a cooking show with you even if i had to bring the yeah. meat uh, we'll come to you, me and David. We'll set up the camera, and I'd really like to see you at work, uh, especially with wild game, because it's you know obviously something I'm pretty passionate about. Because th it, there truly is something to going out, and all all of these animals that I've killed, 
I've essentially watched them grow up and you know it's kind of morbid but at the same time you know I'm only taking out the ones that are mature I'm not killing babies yeah and, oh, it's, um, it's protecting them process, I kill yeah. I kill coyotes I kill you know I'm hopefully gonna kill a bobcat this year that's murdering all my turkeys so um, you know I try to to kind of keep them fed and fat and happy and, and keep the other animals off their back so something that I'm very passionate about and uh, I hate when people are like oh I'm not eating that uh, taste gamey, whatever it may be, and so just any way that I can kind of portray it to people of how to do that and, and how to make it the process better because you know I'll hear people killing deer and, and they like the deer and they'll eat a little bit of it and they'll give it away and stuff like that, but um, which is great if, if somebody needs the meat, but at the same time, I'd really like to find ways to, to make the meat better to where we can, you know you know help people along the process of finding good ways to cook it so yeah i'd love to i'd love oh, to cool it's yeah. a lot of fun we've established that on camera <laughs> so um, yeah it's 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 locked in now i can't take oh, that yeah, you back. can't take it back it's, on, it's gonna be youtube famous so you got any questions <clears throat> no thank you for filming uh mike mike has not traditionally been here david's been behind the camera uh but i wanted to bring david in front of it because uh, he's been here since like the third or fourth one and, uh, Usually when I come in, I'm sitting where David is. And yeah, we about talk about something stupid. <laughs> so, but we're, about aliens. We're, trying, aliens Bigfoot, <laughs> we're trying to cut down on the stupid <laughs> ones and, and do the important ones and making sure people are hearing uh, well, stories. We talk football. Yeah, we yeah. have to talk football. You got any questions, man? Big Chef? No, nah, no, nah, no questions. Um, you know, it's been fun having you on. Though. Yeah, it's, and, and I really yeah. appreciate it. We've been talking about doing a wild game one for how long? Cooking show. So about two years, I yeah. guess. We've literally about been talking two. about it for like two years, and and I don't feel comfortable enough in my cooking expertise to, to put it on camera. But I would love to be the mouth that says, "Oh, and now what are you going to do?" And whatever. <laughs> uh, and you know, obviously, yeah, hopefully, to be able to supply you um, with some meat. Um, that way, you don't have to cut into your own stock or anything like that. I've got quite a bit. So. Oh really? Yeah. Do you have? A, I assume you have like a standalone freezer. Yeah, I've got I got quite a quite a bit of duck and goose still. Um, yeah, I would, yeah, I would like to try some of that as well if, yeah. if we could incorporate that. Yeah, in that'd be great. Better. Yeah, and that, that's one thing that a lot of people don't really know how to cook. Um, I'm clueless. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people really don't, you know, especially goose, you know, because it's 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 so tricky. It's so it's such a weird meat to cook. You know, I'd love to show a couple yeah. techniques. Yeah, I've uh, I've ex I've explored a lot of quite a bit in wild turkey because for several years there I tagged out and then I was hunting in the fall as well. Uh, so I always had like a plethora of, you know, of the meat. Um, and I was injecting it, just trying all different stuff. And I uh, really got into a good process with that. Then, I, like I said, I didn't hunt this year. And I always like to do a batch of like Kentucky Colonel mm -hmm. uh, fried stuff. So, yeah, I'd be really interested to try that. So Yeah, that'd be great. So I, we don't want to leave without you being able to talk about any, any more that you want to talk about the Marriott and, and what you're doing with them. You know, is there going to be like social media pages and stuff? Like yeah. That? So we've already got, uh, it's Marriott. I believe it's Marriott Lexington city center. Uh, so we're on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, probably all the other ones. Um, but I don't know those are the big ones that we're on. Um, we have a great girl, Mackenzie, she's taking care of that. So she posts quite a bit, all the stuff that we do. Um, we do a lot of charity events and stuff as well, cool. so she's she's been you know doing that. We just spent la week before last um, at a uh, pet adoptathon, um, helping the Lexington Humane Society adopt some pets, which was a lot of fun. You know, we cool. helped out at the food shelter and you know a couple different things. So it's <clears throat> it's great. You can follow all that stuff on there as well. But uh, yeah, November twenty second. Come check us out. It's gonna be a lot of fun. What about your personal pages? You want to give them a shout out too? Um, uh, sure. It's uh, Chef TJ. So it's awesome. You got that one locked <laughs> yeah, down. Yeah, it's my uh, it's my Instagram. Um, if you follow me, sorry I don't post a lot. Yeah, it's a bummer. Uh, <laughs> you need to you need to um, up it up. But I will. I will once once on that wild game. Once I'm stuff. doing something other than sitting in an office, it's kind yeah. of boring. I don't so really you have gonna, much to post right now. Will you show some of the stuff? Um, that's going on inside the restaurant on your personal course, page or will yeah. it be like separated? Uh, no, there'll, there'll be a lot of that on my okay, page as well. Okay, very cool. There'll be a lot of that on my page. And, and Mackenzie will help out with that as well. She's always at all of our events and she will be in the kitchen where we're doing testing and she'll take pictures of us, you know, doing some some testing and recipe stuff. So it should be a lot of fun. Awesome. Anything else? I don't think that should be about it. Okay, well, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, please like share and subscribe our pages um the youtube page is the biggest um love to see a boost in subscriptions on that since we've 
well, we went up like a couple hundred on Facebook here in the last two or three weeks, mostly thanks to uh, Matt Bradford. So, uh, I didn't, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, he's he's the one that's behind that. He's been sending out a lot of uh, page invites for us, and um, so thanks uh, for that, Matt. If you're listening, and uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page. That's the way that uh, we're gonna be able to continue to bring you guys content, awesome guests like TJ, and then like subscribe to stuff on, uh, uh, you know, like and share the stuff on Facebook and Instagram as well. So. Until next time, we'll see you again. We're going to have another awesome guest. Not really sure it's going to be yet. Uh, me and Dave are going to talk that over, but uh, we really appreciate you guys for tuning in. We'll see you later. Thanks. Um, I'll have him get a picture.